What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. It's good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating the drink. Look at damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please oh, no. And yes, me, no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's good, people? What's up? It's me, L Teddy 27, and I'm back. Okay. Here for another review. This is going to be our review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season five, episode seven. It is entire titled Fireball and Fire Pit. Now, um, yeah, mm, a lot happened this episode. A, a lot, man. Let me get my drink because, yeah. Anyway, so they're still at this crab spot having dinner. You know, talking in about what the husband's been doing since they were done. And Ashley talks about Michael. And we thought that we were going to get this moment where um, Candace and Giselle was going to tell Ashley about what Michael had been doing. They decided not to, which was cool. Classy. Glad they decided um, to save it for a private moment. So then when they get back to the house, um, <laughs> there was this big bug. I don't know if it was a cockroach or a moth or some other type of cicada type insect. It did look rather large. It was flying around and they brought out what looked to be like 84 cans of raid and still couldn't manage to kill this thing. But Karen came with her shoe and killed it. When you old school like Karen, you know that's the only thing that can kill a bug. Also, she looked like she used to deal with bugs, but y'all, uh, I'm going to keep myself quiet on Candace. Not Candace, Karen. Anyway, but Karen killed it with the shoe. So then Candace and Giselle, they come down. Uh, well, Monique wanted to have this big moment at the fire pit. And Monique was trying to have all the girls around the fire pit to have some, um, I don't know, moment where they talked or whatever. I don't know. But... At this point, Ashley and, I'm not Ashley, Candace and Giselle had decided, okay, we're going to, you know, let Ashley know, but we don't want to do it with the rest of the girls. So they took the moment, you know, while the girls were down at the fire pit to say, you know what, let's just have this sit down with her and let her know the information that we have. So they do that. Well, first, Ashley, not Ashley, I keep wanting to say Ashley, Candace and Giselle, they talk about, you know, how they're going to do it. And while they're doing that, Monique keeps trying to come in and interrupt and see what they got going on and figure out what they're talking about. Ashley's still upstairs putting her um, son to sleep. And so Monique keeps trying to figure out what they're talking about because really she thinks they're talking about her. Girl, ain't nobody thinking about you, Monique. Ain't nobody thinking about you. Anyway, um... Ashley finally comes down, and so Candace and Giselle are like, all right, you know, can you give us a moment, Monique, um, so we can talk to Ashley? And so they talk to Ashley, and they tell her everything. Monique is in her feelings, because like I said, she don't want to be left out, and she hates anything that involves Candace and does not involve her. Anyway, um, so they tell her, now, even though it took five years for Monique to leave, she finally left. They tell Ashley. They give her the, you know, text messages and everything. They tell her everything that they know. Ashley didn't seem one bit surprised. Probably because Ashley is already aware of this situation. She is okay with it. She has greenlit this situation. Has given the thumbs up and have checked that check. Okay, that checkbox. She, I guarantee you, she know who the boyfriend is. They probably done had a threesome. Child. When you throwing the money around that Michael is throwing around at Ashley, you get those type of arrangements where you can have a boyfriend and a wife at the same time and probably have sex with both of them simultaneously. So you can't tell me that Ashley ain't already um, know about all this stuff that's going on. Don't try. You you aren't doing a good enough job at this acting thing, um, Ashley, trying to act like you ain't know. Anyway, later that night, after the whole, because they did finally make it out to the um, fire pit, um, Candace, Giselle, and Ashley. And, you know, they all decided, some of them decided to go to sleep. Giselle had to go for some awards or whatever, so she wanted to get some sleep and everything. Anyway, so we end up with Monique, Candace, Karen, and Wendy down um, in one of the rooms, I, um, I think the little dining room or whatever, having some fireball shots. Karen gets way drunker than she should, you know, just started getting sloppy drunk. She started to try to open her heart up and tell everybody about what she got going on with her uh, with her marriage. Nobody cared. Nobody was listening. We if, First of all, if we did care or were trying to listen, it was incoherent to begin with because you were so shit face drunk. But anyway, the next morning, um, Big Chris, I'm gonna call him Big Chris. 
Big Chris is Monique's husband. Little Chris is Candace's husband. Okay, that's what we're gonna call him. Big Chris and Little Chris. So Big Chris comes and you know, you know, greets his wife, everything, checks on everything, make sure everything's okay. Um, the ladies wake up and they start to have breakfast. Now, then we have this whole thing where two ponytail, two ponytail puffs, two face stars, Monique tries to confront Candace about not coming to the fire pit and having Ashley and Giselle in there and everything. And we all know where this is coming from. Stank ass, bitch ass Monique is too, she's too much of a pussy, too soft to address the issue that she really has with Candace, which is the fact that Candace is friends with Sharice, who put her, and Sharice put her business out there about the her last child, perhaps not being her, um, Chris, the big Chris's. So, in, instead of her confronting Candace about that, any opportunity she gets to confront Candace about another situation that has nothing to do with the root of the issue that she has with Candace, she puts 20 on 10. Now she jumping through hoops. Now she yelling from the rooftops at all this, that, and the third. You is you is on some bitch shit, um, Monique. Let me just put that out there. And I'm sorry I have to be that vulgar. But this is some bitch shit right here. Because you too much of a um, puss-ass bitch to really confront Candace about your real issue. So now... God forbid Candace had dropped a cup in a, a glass in the house and the glass had broken. Baby, it would have been, you know, World War Three. Like, it's any little thing that Candace does that has nothing to do with the real um, problem you have with her, you just blow up about. And that's what the fuck we got going on here. I wasn't here for Monique in this situation. This shit didn't have nothing to do with her. Everybody in the house was like, okay, this was actually the right thing to do. We understand why they did it. Nobody had a problem. You were trying to control everybody now that we can. You had this control issue. You wanted to control everything everybody does. And to be honest, people were not having a good time. And so you trying to control everything was ruining everything. But whatever. Anyway, I mean, she was hell bent on making Candace the victim here. And it's like, whatever. Anyway, and the thing about it is Ashley even tried to explain her. No, it wasn't what you thought. Um, Candace was really trying to, you know, be a good friend. She was trying to do the right thing and, you know, not tell me about what she had found out in front of everybody and so forth. Oh, she didn't want to hear. Any, Monique didn't want to hear any parts of that. She had already concocted in her mind the whole, you know, reason why. Just a mess. Just a damn mess. Monique ain't shit. Anyway, then... um. That after that died down, they said, well, let's go get start getting ready um, so we can get um, before the husbands get here. Even, and some of the husbands had started to arrive. Karen then ceremoniously proceeded to tell us that her coochie stinks. I can believe that. She gives me that she's the type of chick that when she leaves the room, there's this faint odor lingering about. So I can imagine her coochie stinks. Mm -hmm. She gives you that, you know, when she leaves the room, everybody's, you know, doing this. You're like, you, you smell that? Yeah, she gives you that, this, this faint odor that lingers after she leaves the room. She gives me that. Karen gives me that. The husbands begin to arrive. Little Chris came. Eddie came. Ray finally came. And then we saw the ladies outside around the pool. Wendy, who's a bone carrier, that's what Wendy is, the new bone carrier, told uh, Robin about how Karen was getting drunk the night before on fireballs, having shot after shot after shot after shot, 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 shots. And so Robin asked Karen about it. Karen, old trifling ass, said, what? Bitch, what? What are you talking about, Robin? You know, Karen don't be here for it. It was like, what? Bitch, what? Girl, don't talk to me. <laughs> that made me laugh. When Karen just dismissed Robin, like, girl, you talking to me? <laughs> that made me laugh. So then, while they're around the pool, once again, Monique wants to make it all about her. She wants to control the situations and control the narratives. And she wants everything to be about her. She's out to make Candace a victim again. I mean, not victim, villain again. And Candace at this point is like, nope, not doing it. Not going to let this. Nope, not going to turn this into a whole situation. My husband here, your husband here. We got all these people here. Nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay classy while Monique stay trashy. Anyway... So Monique walks off and everybody and Robin and Wendy is like, girl, what is your deal? Girl, get your life in order. Like, what is your deal, Monique? But they don't understand that Monique is an ain't shit ass motherfucker. And ain't shit ass motherfuckers gonna always be ain't shit ass motherfuckers. It's nothing you can do about that. I'm just saying. 
Because they ain't shit. Anyway, I told y'all a couple episodes that um, Monique was an ain't shit ass motherfucker. But I, you know, I'd go back and watch that episode, that review. I told y'all earlier, shit ain't shit ass motherfucker. Y'all ain't believe me. Now you see. Anyway, they're sitting down, eating and whatnot. And so we get this whole backstory about Wendy and her husband, Eddie, and the fact that Eddie's parents and family don't see it for their marriage. Like, they don't want them to get married at all. I feel like there's a lot more to that story than they're telling me about. Than they're not telling me, but telling us about. But, you know, that's their business. That's their family dynamics and drama. And, you know, we got to let them have that. But um, to go on with that point, if you're going to then introduce that storyline or introduce that part into the television atmosphere, then I think you should go ahead and really, you know, unpack all of it. I'm not saying they had to do it right there, but at some point, hopefully all of that gets unpacked because I do believe that there are parts of that whole situation that we're not hearing about. Um, it's sad when you got parents that don't even show up to your wedding and haven't even met your um, your children and their grandchildren. And, you know, it, my heart goes out to Eddie because he's caught in the middle. But like I said, I feel like there's other things that are there, other parts of the story that we just don't have. And I, I hope at some point that they do unpack all of that. And, and, and it looks like Wendy does need to talk to someone about that and get some real good advice from someone who's licensed um, and someone who has degrees in that area so that they can help um, that family dynamic. Because I think that before long, it will have to be addressed anyway. Um, then the husbands, um, and wives play this game where they imitate their husbands, right? Their wife, the husbands imitate their wives. Now, disrespectful ass big Chris, he's so damn disrespectful. For all I care on his mom was doing, your mama, you ain't do a good job of giving him no goddamn home training. But this motherfucker does the imitation of his wife, um, acting like she's sucking on his meat. I was like. He picks up this big old bottle and puts it to his mouth like she was like that was his wife. Now, I'm not going to lie. For the rest of the show, I did crotch watch to see if he really had all that going on that he alluded to having going on with that big old bottle. I ain't see a whole lot going on down there, Chris. You put 20 on 10 with your meat size. But anyway, that's what men like to do. But it was disrespectful. damn It was so out of place. Then <clears throat> but the best one was when little Chris imitated Candace, trying to act like the pageant girl at first, and then getting all ratchet with the knife. Turn, uh, <laughs> we did the light switch thing. That was real funny. That had me cracking up. And um, and so everybody goes home. So we see this part where Ashley is driving in her car after she's back you know, home. She's driving in the car with her baby, and there's this conversation that she tries to have with Michael. It was very off-putting. Like, the way Michael was talking to her and addressing her, and it, it, it just was really, really really off putting um it gave you i feel like if the cameras were not there ashley wouldn't have been as emboldened to speak to michael in the manner that she was like i felt like i feel like if there were no cameras there michael would have been a lot more aggressive and would have been talking down to her a lot more and it was off-putting and it was disturbing and disrespectful, even in just a little bit that we saw. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it at all. After that, we saw news starting to um, come out about Michael. Oh, yeah. Um, congratulations to Giselle on winning her award. She did win an award for a book. Anyway, um, but news started to come out about Michael and what really happened at the strip club. And they had pictures of him in his underwear in the hotel, which invoked the gag reflex and made me want to vomit. I mean, it was really disturbing and disgusting. And then pictures of him having drinks, pictures of him with his hands all on some chick's legs or whatever. It was a mess. Just a whole damn mess. But then it went off from there. So we'll see next week what happens with the Ashley Michael situation. There also appears to be next week, we're going to have a whole skirmish and situation involving Monique. We'll see how that goes. I told you shit ain't shit ass motherfucker. I just, I told y'all that. When you're right as much as I am, you don't have to brag about it. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all this week. Until next time, I'm going to try to get better. I got it to y'all before the week was out. i try to get next week's episode out before Thursday. That's my goal. Maybe Tuesday. That's all I got for y'all. Until next time, thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.